AM Best is releasing a number of reports as part of its annual look at the global reinsurance industry focused on various aspects, sectors, and geographic regions. Here to discuss the U.S. Bermuda reinsurers and their performance is Gregory Dickerson, Director AM Best. And Greg, comparing underwriting performance of the composite versus the global industry as a whole, was there anything that jumped out at you? Well, most reinsurers in the U.S. and Bermuda write a fair amount of international business to complement their U.S. exposures. And conversely, U.S. exposure makes up a significant portion of business written by reinsurers that are domiciled outside of the U.S. and Bermuda. So it shouldn't be surprising to see the underwriting performance of the composite fairly well correlated with the global reinsurance industry. And that's broadly what we've seen over time. So that being said, U.S. and Bermudian underwriting results have outperformed the global composite pretty consistently over the past five years, though not by a wide margin. And that could be attributable to uh, a generally stronger reinsurance pricing environment in the U.S. over that period when compared to Europe or Asia. And it could also reflect the fact that in addition to writing reinsurance, many U.S. and Bermudian underwriters also have significant U.S. primary underwriting platforms, which have benefited from favorable market conditions for the last several years, particularly in casualty and specialty lines. So for the second straight year, net premiums crew, is this something that we should expect to continue? Well, we do uh, think that robust net written premium growth is nearly certain to continue in 2023 and possibly into 2024 as well. Reinsurers benefited from significant rate improvement at the January 2023 renewals, and indications are that pricing gains accelerated um, in catastrophe-exposed property lines at the April, June, and July renewal seasons as well. Increased competition in other areas, including public DNO and cyber business, is going to dampen overall pricing gains to an extent. But in total, we'd expect strong top line growth for the full year 2023. And then loss experience for the rest of the year is going to go a long way toward determining whether reinsurers push for a, a significant additional rate in 2024. But we don't expect any softening next year. And then demand for reinsurance protection should really remain high, which provides a runway for a continued growth in 2024. What do we see in, the, in terms of capacity and what should we expect to see going forward? All right, so an important distinction needs to be made between available capacity and deployed capacity. And there's no shortage of available capacity, but many reinsurers are keeping a buffer of excess capital rather than deploying it, at least in catastrophe exposed lines. In areas outside of property cat, deployed capacity is, is a bit less scarce. So that being said, there are very early signs that deployed capacity may be starting to expand in the U.S. and Bermuda reinsurance market, including in cat exposed business. But unlike previous hard market cycles, capital inflows have not included a meaningful contribution from new company formations. What we saw in the first half of 2023 was a few well-established franchises with strong track records, either raising capital to support organic growth or fund acquisitions, or shifting their deployed capacity into property cap. Um, and we'd expect that approach to remain consistent for the remainder of the year with new capital gravitating towards companies with a proven history of success. Thanks, Greg. Thanks. That was Director Greg Dickerson. You can find the full report online at ambest.com. For AMBest TV, I'm John Weber.